Discover the significance of Chasiv Yar in the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Explore the historical background and strategic importance of this battleground. Learn why Chasiv Yar has become a focal point in the tensions between the two countries and how it continues to shape the dynamics of the conflict. Watch this video to gain a deeper understanding of the role Chasiv Yar plays in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Boom, that's real artillery. What's the situation in Chasiv Yar? How dangerous is it right now? Look, right now it's not like it was before, because the Ukraine war, from its beginning, has had numerous important and decisive battles that have significantly marked changes for both sides and modifications on the front line. Among the most mentioned are the Battle of Bakhmut, the Battle of Orkiv, the Battle for Marinka, the Battle for Siversk, and of course the lethal Battle for Avdivka. However, with the changing war scenario in Ukraine, we are facing another decisive battle, the Battle of Chasiv Yar. You might ask, why is this particular city so important for both the Russians and Ukrainians? Well, the answer is a rather logical but very interesting strategic explanation filled with geographical, strategic, tactical, armament, and even political elements. Furthermore, if Chasiv Yar falls into Russian hands, probably by 2025 the Russians could begin to take other medium-sized and much more important cities such as Kramatorsk, Slovyansk, and Kostyantinivka. Chasiv Yar also represents a very significant and personal analysis for me. During my trip to the front line in Ukraine in September 2023, I was able to visit the heart of the city of Chasiv Yar and witness artillery attacks from both sides. Well, let's start with the basics to understand the Battle of Chasiv Yar and its great importance. Chasiv Yar in Ukrainian or Chasiv Yar in Russian, is a small city located in the Bakhmut region, in the Donetsk Oblast approximately 10 kilometers west of Bakhmut. Before the war, the population of Chasiv Yar was about 13,000 people. However, as you watch this video, there are probably fewer than 400 or 500 people living there, many of them elderly who refuse to leave their homes. Serhii Gurbanov, head of the military administration of the city of Kostyantinivka, has been trying for months to convince the inhabitants of Chasiv Yar to leave. There are intense shellings, the place is being attacked, it's a difficult situation, he states. People live underground in basements. We tell them, please leave, and they respond with excuses. Most say they don't want to abandon their home. We try to help them, but they refuse. To better understand the city of Chasiv Yar, it's relevant to know that many of the inhabitants of Chasiv Yar worked before the war in companies dedicated to the manufacture of reinforced concrete products and the extraction of refractory clay a material resistant to high temperatures used mainly in the manufacture of ceramics and refractory bricks. These two products were the backbone of the local economy. It's also crucial to mention that a water channel crosses the eastern edge of the city, hosting numerous water bodies and situated in an elevated area. A channel is not the same as a river, but it's quite similar. Rather, a channel is a man-made waterway, usually with a straighter and more controlled design, built for specific purposes such as navigation, irrigation, or hydroelectric power generation. This channel is a key strategic point that we will analyze later. So don't forget it. After the official capture of the city of Bakhmut on May 20, 2023, by the Russians in what continues to be the most brutal and bloody battle of the conflict, the next important and logical objective was Chasiv Yar. However, conquering it is far from an easy task, and the Russians know this very well. Since the battle was being fought in Bakhmut, the Ukrainians were already fortifying Chasiv Yar. Therefore, the Russians had to make slow and very careful advances in this heavily reinforced area with tactical advantages such as height and the cover provided by surrounding dachas and forests. It can be said that from April 4, 2024, the Russians began to implement innovative and powerful movements and tactics to initiate what would be the Battle of Chasiv Yar. Among these were the use of Su-25 attack planes with bombs and rockets, and also a mechanized column the size of a company advanced along the T-506 road from Kramatorsk to Chasiv Yar and reached the eastern outskirts of the city, where the 23rd Ukrainian Infantry Battalion was reportedly stationed. As you can see, this effort did not start with the massive deployment of Russian soldiers, but rather with a series of actions aimed at weakening Ukrainian defenses and fortifications using artillery, airstrikes, guided bombs, drones, and other long-range means. We must be clear that this was a strategic and prudent move by the Russian forces. A few days later, on April 9, 2024, 
the Russians began using powerful Hurrigan missiles to attack residential areas in Chasiv Yar. And here I must take a parenthesis to share my personal experience. I traveled through part of this city, which was already being subjected to artillery attacks, albeit to a lesser extent. And while there were civilians, the city seemed ghostly, dominated mainly by the presence of soldiers in pickup trucks or outside apartments they used. Who knows, perhaps the civilians were in basements or bunkers. According to the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, these attacks with BM-27 Hurrigan missiles resulted in the deaths of 48 people, although it is complicated to determine whether they were civilians or military without being there. Serhi Chaus, the unofficial mayor of Chasiv Yar, said the following, from now on there is not a single intact building in the city of Chasiv Yar, referring to the fact that all buildings suffered at least partial or total damage. I personally witnessed this. I remember seeing more damaged buildings than intact ones during my visit in September 2023, even if the damage was minor, caused by artillery fragments. Let me tell you that even at that time, going to Chasiv Yar was no damn game. In fact, our fixer or guide, Dima, commented that Chasiv Yar is not for beginners, to give you an idea of how dangerous it was. Even before our arrival, a few months earlier, more precisely on May 9, 2023, French war correspondent Armin Soldan of Agence France Press died in Chasiv Yar with a camera in hand by the impact of a Russian grad rocket. To further illustrate the danger of the situation, six days after our visit to Chasiv Yar another tragic incident occurred. On September 10, 2023, Russian forces attacked with a Kornet missile a vehicle carrying four aid workers from Road to Relief, a Spanish NGO that supports the civilian population in the Donbass. These aid workers had the mission of visiting the front line to determine resource allocation. The attack killed Emma Igual, the co-founder of the organization, of Spanish nationality, and Anthony Einad, a Canadian aid worker. Volunteers Johan Schur from Sweden and Ruben Mawick from Germany were injured and evacuated to a hospital where their condition was stabilized. I repeat, what you heard happened just six days after we were in Chasiv Yar and they hadn't even begun the battle more energetically as now. Now, if we analyze the Russian strategic plan to capture Chasiv Yar, we see a complex operation that will probably take time, but is expected to be effective in the medium term. Russia is advancing on Chasiv Yar from three main directions, something like a fork. From the north, in April 2024, they captured Bodenivka and advanced towards another small village called Siversk, where they are already making significant advances at the time you see this report. This constitutes the first Russian advance front, or the northern part, so to speak. The second is in the Chasiv Yar micro-district, which is ahead of the canal, and where yes, the Russians have already entered the first streets, although they have been repelled and tried again on numerous occasions. But it is maintained that they already have positions in these first streets of the micro-district, which is something like the suburbs of Chasiv Yar. But obviously, the advance is slow due to urban warfare. So this would be the second Russian advance front. And the third front, undoubtedly the riskiest but where the Russians have had the most success, is in the south, where airborne troops, probably from the 7th Air Assault Division, along with other mechanized units, have managed to cross the canal, establishing a bridgehead on the other side of the canal and now seek to expand their presence west of Chasiv Yar. The ultimate goal is clear, to encircle and capture Chasiv Yar, a crucial point for the Russian advance towards the larger cities in the Donetsk region, specifically Kramatorsk and Slovyansk. With these cities under control, Russia could claim a significant strategic achievement in its goal of securing eastern Ukraine. It is evident that the battle for Chasiv Yar will not be easy or quick. Both sides are determined to win and will use all resources at their disposal. The city of Chasiv Yar has become the epicenter of a fierce and ruthless struggle that will define the future of the region. In summary, Chasiv Yar represents not only a battle on the battlefield but also a symbol of Ukrainian resistance and Russian determination. The fight for this city is a reflection of the broader war in Ukraine a war that has transformed lives, cities, and the destiny of an entire nation. The battle for Chasiv Yar is a reminder of the human and strategic cost of war, and of the determination of both sides to fight for what they consider their future. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description. Remember, 
but people who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it.